Let's talk about the import of this election for a moment. Here is the Heritage Foundation president, Kevin Roberts, talking about, uh, I guess, ostensibly on Real America's Voice in the wake of the Supreme Court's presidents can do illegal things, but just not be held accountable for it. Uh, ruling by the Supreme Court. And uh, here's Kevin Roberts. This is the guy who wrote the 2025 project. Or Project 2025. Project 2025, yeah. Which is about, I mean, broad strokes. There's a lot of just sort of like uh, normie Republican stuff in it. But there's also a lot of, we want to turn the government into an authoritarian um infrastructure and destroy the administrative state that's one of the major thrusts of the uh 20 uh, project 2025 25 and here's the guy who wrote it and will be marshalling it through this is also the same organization that handed donald trump a list of justices um from which he chose his supreme court justices and i imagine also subsidiary uh federal judgeships when he was in office Things. Number one, in spite of all this nonsense from the left, we are going to win. We're in the process of taking this country back. No one in the audience should be despairing. No one should be discouraged. We ought to be really encouraged by what happened yesterday. And in spite of all of the injustice, which, of course, friends and audience of this show, of our friend Steve know, we are going to prevail. Number two, to, to the point of the clips and, and, of course, your preview of the fact that I am an early American historian and love the Constitution, that, that Supreme Court ruling yesterday on immunity is vital. And it's vital for a lot of reasons but I would go to Federalist number 70. If people in the audience are looking for something to read over Independence Day weekend, in addition to rereading the Declaration of Independence, read Hamilton's number 70, because there, along with some other essays, in some other essays, he talks about the importance of a vigorous executive. You know, former congressman, the importance of Congress doing its job, but we also know the importance of the executive being able to do his job. And can you imagine, Dave Brown, at. Any president, put politics off to the side, any president having to second guess, triple guess every decision they're making in their official capacity, you couldn't have the republic that you just described. But number three, let me speak about the radical left. You and I have both been parts of faculties and faculty senates and understand that the left has taken over our institutions. The reason that they are apoplectic right now, the reason that so many anchors on MSNBC, for example, are losing their minds daily is because our side is winning. And so I come full circle in this response and just want to encourage you with some substance that we are in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. Huh. What? what? Right on. Thank you. What? Yeah. Well. So guest hosting that guy is... Um, that is the guy who beat uh, Eric Cantor back in Virginia. He was served one term, but he was one of the original sort of like uh, mm -hmm. Tea Party uh, usurpers. Uh, now he's probably considered a moderate in the context of the Republican Party. <laughs> but Heritage Foundation, you know, is basically saying we're we're about to orchestrate a coup. What we're talking about is a radical disassembling of our government. We got a president who is not going to have to second guess what he's doing in any instance because he now has full immunity. Full immunity. And the left will either accept it or we'll take out our weapons. I mean, that's... I, I, I want to say that's the subtext, but it's almost the text. Yeah, um, it's, an, it, it's a threat. <laughs> it's a threat. It'll remain bloodless. What it, What was the second part of that quote? It'll remain bloodless if they allow it to be. If if they they, it to be. Yeah, exactly. Any I resistance mean, will be met with violence is what they're saying. And they're saying that's not as some type of like militia. They're saying when we take over the government, if the left has a problem with it, there'll be blood.
Well, and, you know, they pose as these freedom lovers, and he, he cites Hamilton there. A lot of people think of, like, the Founding Fathers as just, like, anti-government people, despite the people who, like, founded the government. Um, Hamilton and Washington put uh, 13,000 tr- 13, troops into Pennsylvania to impose the whiskey uh, tax. Uh, and, like, you know, I don't wonder if that's what... Be- if people understand what the, that's what they mean is we're going to use, you know, the military and maybe the National Guards on people who protest and uh, any of this stuff, because, uh, yeah, it's our time. Well, it's just fa- it's just fascist <laughs> talk there. Um, and like this is what we have been warning about as it relates to that Project 2025 thing, um, which is that Trump basically learned from his first time in office that he shouldn't waste any more time. Um, oh, yeah. And, and, he, and he understood what he was capable of doing. And now that's been exacerbated. Let's play this clip of Nina Totenberg. Um, she says this in a, in, a, in a more delicate way than I think uh, should be spoken. But what she's basically talking in this clip is that uh, the Supreme Court is largely made up of men who were raised, essentially, to believe in the authoritarian power of the president just recall that you know john roberts was down there in the 2020 election down in florida he was one of those lawyers kavanaugh was um was actually worked in the white house but also uh, worked for ken Starr. i mean these guys want to allow the president to wield a tremendous amount of power um play this uh, totenberg clip If you look at those five of those six justices spent their entire lives before becoming judges as most of their lives, at least being acolytes to presidents, they worked in the White House, they worked in the Justice Department and top positions. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh was staff staff secretary, I think was his title. He's the guy who decided what the president and who the president saw and the materials that went into the president. And most of these these guys felt for all of their lives that they the presidents were being harassed, harassed by the opposition party, harassed by plaintiffs, harassed in all kinds of ways that made their jobs very difficult to do. And that is reflected in this decision today. And the only member of the conservative supermajority who dissented at all was Justice Amy Coney Barrett, who was did not have that experience. Well, I want to like don't want to exaggerate her dissent. <laughs> um, she, she could have she uh, actually dissent. dissented, by the way. She oh, She's I had mean. a more nuanced take, maybe. But Totenberg's um, a little bit of an access merchant, but, a little bit. So. Yeah. But here's the point. The uh, uh, Totally. And, and that's why she says it in a, in a much softer way. If the president, and uh, obviously Joe Biden's already announced that he will, not, um, he will not engage in this stuff. But if the president feels like there's nothing he can be held accountable for, nothing, absolutely nothing. And of course, he's not going to go and murder somebody uh, when it's, you know, it's Donald Trump. He's too, he's too old, too weak. He can't, he'll fall over. <laughs> but if the president feels there's absolutely nothing that he can be held account for, it's not just a question of like, I'm going to spy on this person or I'm going to, um, you know, uh, monetize the office. Uh, it's also I'm going to take uh, I'm going to uh, uh, order people to do things in the executive agencies that are going to undermine these agencies and maybe in ways that are just not visible at first. And if there's no um, if there's no accountability, that's what we've got. Yeah. So with Project 2025, they're going to stack the administrative state with sycophants and then slash a lot of other jobs. That's the plan. Um, And then as it relates to something like January 6th, I think that's the other under discussed lesson that Trump learned, which is that he shouldn't have wasted time. Um, He should have used the Insurrection Act and got i mean he remember in the final days before january 6 when he kept firing and cycling through attorneys general because he wanted so badly to uh continue 
trying to overturn the results of an election, but also it was floated by was it was it Chesabro that he should I, I forget exactly who it was, but I think it was Chesabro that he should use the Insurrection Act to crack down on people who want to take him out of the White House. Like that's the lesson that he learned that we should be doing this more quickly and more efficiently. Um, and that's what should be very terrifying. <laughs> Hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.